Thomas had gone to the works to be mended, so the fat controller asked Duck to look after the branch line. Duck was delighted. It was a nice change, and he got along swimmingly with the coaches. Percy was happy to see him again, and although Toby was grateful for the help, he found Duck to be rather opinionated. One morning, Toby was bringing trucks from the quarry. Bertie was approaching the road crossing, but to Toby's horror, he wasn't slowing down. The brakes came on, and both engine and bus shut their eyes. They just missed each other. When they met at the station, Bertie was most apologetic. I'm sorry, Toby, he sighed. I've got a new driver, you see. He seems to think I can beat you to the crossing. That's all right, Toby smiled. I just hope he doesn't put you in danger like that again. Doc arrived with Annie and Clarable. He'd heard everything. Didn't your driver see the crossing gates, Bertie? There are no gates, Toby replied. It's... Duck gasped. How can you run on a line with no gates? It isn't dignified. Otherwise, those road vehicles wouldn't know to stop. I know when to stop. Thank you, Skull Bertie. It's for your safety as well as ours, Bertie, replied Duck. Accidents cause problems for all of us. The fat controller needs to put up gates at once. You should have asked him to do so ages ago. Toby and Bertie said no more. I don't believe it, Percy, said Doc. I never thought Toby would be foolish enough to run on an unsafe line. The line is safer because Toby runs on it, replied Percy. His cowcatchers and side plates work wonders. You needn't worry, Doc. If the fat controller thought gates were needed, he'd have put them up ages ago. Doc was unconvinced. They were needed in his opinion. Recently, one of the level crossings had been having issues with its gates. Sometimes they worked as intended, others they stuck, no matter how hard the signalman pulled the lever. There hadn't been any accidents, only headaches from the delays, and the engines took great care when they approached. Unfortunately, no one had warned Duck. The next morning, Duck was puffing happily along. The coaches sang quietly to each other, and Duck was pleased with himself. He passed a level crossing, its gates keeping traffic at bay. Now that's the way, he thought, just like a proper railway. At the troublesome crossing, the cars and trucks had passed safely through. A new signalman was on duty. He pulled the lever and went back to his coffee. He didn't notice the gates had stuck. Duck soon approached the gates, but he didn't worry. They'll open, they'll open, he smiled. But they didn't. They're sure to open. They have to. Still, the gates stayed shut, and Duck was getting closer and closer. Stop! Stop! He cried. His brakes screeched and his whistle blew, but it was too late. Crash! Duck sat on the crossing, remnants of the gate clinging to his front. Oh dear, he blushed. There wasn't time to examine him. Traffic was building on either side of the crossing. Percy had to pull him to the next station. When they arrived, Toby and Bertie were there. Toby is Bertie innocently. Who's that? It's Duck, replied Toby, though it seems he can't decide between pulling a train and being a crossing guard. Whatever he's doing, it doesn't look very safe to me. He laughed as Bertie roared away with his passengers. Duck blushed once again and looked at his buffers decorated by the broken gate. He wouldn't be making any remarks about safety for quite some time.